Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Yelena. Welcome to our YouTube channel and our tutorial today on the jump back from Padmasana, Lotus Pose. Ooh, it's hard. You probably won't be able to do it by the end of this video. Just <laughs> don't say that at the beginning. Well, it's true, but we're going to give you lots of little tips and technique uh, as to how to work towards it. It's really hard. It is hard, yeah. But we do have, uh, we have a strategy yeah. that has steps for you to work on that will get you there. Yeah. I wish it was as easy as like, here's how you do it and then you can do it. But it's not. Still. Most it's of the it's practice nice to have the illusion like at the beginning <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. tutorial. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, before we go on, <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe. We have other things that you probably won't be able to do. Uh, <laughs> right away. <laughs> right away. Uh, let us know if there's something that you can't do that we can show you. And um, um, what else? And like. like and uh, share. Share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but seriously, how long did it take you to be able to jump back from Lotus? Well, just getting into Lotus took me a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's that. But so, let's say that you can do Lotus now. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to build? Do I don't know. I mean, I, I jumping back was like one of those things that I could do earlier on, do you know, right. like, so it was working on the Lotus that took time. Yeah. Like the flexibility yeah. of Lotus, not being able to hold it, it but I, but you know yeah it's all part of the yeah yeah the lotus jump back for me came much later like i was able to do the the regular jump back and jump through so without touching but lotus took another um probably two years before it like, well that's showed the thing yeah. even the jump back without touching oh, yeah is it's not super common uh, especially for women, right? It's not, I mean, it's, there's lots of women that do it. I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's like scared but, looking. <laughs> no, no. But, but, uh, I would say that it usually comes faster for men. And we've talked about this before because of the proportions. A lot of the time that men have upper body is bigger than the hips Yeah. and women it's more even. And so it's harder. Not even that it's more even, it, it off, there's, you know, the hips can be curvier. Mm -hmm. And so then that would add different weight distribution when you're, I think that's why it came for me sooner, relatively speaking. You have narrower Because hips. my hips are quite narrow, yeah. Yeah. Like my hips are exactly same as my waist. Right. So anyway, <laughs> no need to study my <laughs> body. But just to say that, and in all of these, the body proportions do play yeah. a significant role, but that's not to say that that's the end of the story. It just the path towards it or the struggle or the ease will be determined by that. Yeah. What's practice, but the effort, mm -hmm. right? Practice is effort. Tatras yat no Yeah. Practice is the effort we make. Um, so, uh, what we can give you is some, some like clear steps for effort right? <laughs> Whether or not the result is there, because practice is also non-attachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> practice and uh, practice is and non-attachment, uh, still the mind. Okay. Maybe, would you like, uh, do you want to have a tutorial on yoga sutras? I don't know. Mm. Okay. All right. So when you're doing this, when we break it down again, we always repeat this, make sure that your knees are okay. Uh, don't, don't do this. If Lotus is relatively new to your practice and when you do Lotus, you know, after a few breaths, you start to feel tension in the knees. Maybe it's not time yet to kind of apply a bit more pressure. Um, which is required to start working on this jump back. Maybe just give a little bit more time for your hips to open up um, so that the lotus is more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm even picturing, we, you could probably work on it, some of these techniques without being in lotus too. You know, similar 
you know, the, the way we break down the regular jump back. Mm -hmm. I could see the, the rounding of the back, yeah, yeah. reaching through the arms, it's resisting just like coming into onto the, the knees instead. Yeah. So uh, sh let's look at it first, and then uh, we can go over some tips. So in Ashtanga, we always go, well, in yoga, asana, we go right leg first and then left to get into our lotus position. And then we would do this vinyasa um, in the primary series after Garbha Pindasana and Kukatasana. You know, when you roll around and then you come up with your arms stuffed in your legs, then after you come down from, um, from Kukatasana, then you would go Dasha, hands down, inhale, pick up, Yekadasha, exhale, Chitwari, Dwadasha, inhale, Prayodasha, exhale. So that, that's the correct vinyasa out of it, but so hard that most people don't do that. And sometimes, uh, not sometimes, almost always, during the lead class, or even my own practice, like I'm quite tired. Mm -hmm. So I will attempt it, but it's not always uh, <laughs> so smooth, yeah. So um, what we see a lot is kind of a modified version of it, but our teacher doesn't like it, and so we don't teach it. You know, he says it's uh, no benefit. So often the strategy then is to roll forward onto your knee knees and with your hands down, and then turn your hands slightly out, squeeze your elbows in, and put your rib cage on your elbows, and then counterbalance your chest forward as you shoot the legs back. It's kind of like a Mayurasana, like a peacockish kind of position, right? Yeah. Where you're using the upper body to lift the, the legs. It's, it's pretty accessible doing it like that, but apparently yeah. no benefit. It is pretty like rolling over, of course, if there's nothing in the knees is not a big deal. And even that, it's like very much momentum. Yeah. yeah. So the, I'm not sure. Not a lot of work. No. The and member practices effort. So, <laughs> but there, there, are, there are some elements of that that we can use when we're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to say is, of course, you're going to try to do it just like you would try to do a regular jump back. But if that doesn't work, then what you could try to do is first you're going to start by lifting your knees towards your your shoulders your chest towards your body your legs towards your chest so you're going to hold that shape so the back is a little bit round and bring your arms in front and then roll forward like you're doing utplati you know like um going to lift the legs off the floor like that then you're going to drop your shoulders and head forward and let and pull your knee back. So see Yelena's knee came down between the hand and she's going to start to walk the knees back, the left knee, the right knee, all the way back. Then without changing the position of the hands. So the hands have consistently been pressing down into the floor. Now she can start to bend the elbows and even lean on the upper arms a little bit. Yep. Am I going to hit you? No, you're good. And then jut the chest forward to get the counterbalance to lift the knees to shoot the legs back. You see that? So it's, uh, it, it looks easier. It, it is easier, but it's not easy. No, it's, it's very super hard. hard. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first time I tried it, I think I like almost face planted. Yeah. Because it requires so much resisting through your arms. Yes. Yeah. And then you have to do kind of an uneven flexion, like in the hip and the, the rounding in the back and the torso to walk the knees. To through. walk, yeah. So two things that, that, that are important to note. One is really helpful, which is flex your feet. So the tendency sometimes when we hold lotus is that we start to relax. And then as we do that, the knees start to slide away from each other. And so if you think about the fact that your hands are on the floor and you need to get your knees past your hands, then the, the tighter it is, the easier it will, will be. Also, using the strength of your legs to keep the lotus kind of nice and tight connects the whole body more. So your pelvic floor is working without you even necessarily thinking about it. And so that allows for the body to stay contained, but then also move as a unit. 
And the second important thing, but this isn't necessarily helpful, this makes it hard, is that once the hands come down on the floor and you do all of this lifting, you can't cheat and try to lift on your fingertips yeah. to get the, the height. height. Because doing that means that you're no longer really resisting through your arms and that resisting through the arms is what eventually will give you the ability to swing. Yeah. It feels like there's not enough room. That's the yeah. problem, right? And that's why we, we tent our hands, why we try to get height on the fingertips. But we've talked about this before. Yelena has freakishly short arms where <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy for her, right? So, but she's able to sort of get so much. Yeah, see? <laughs> so she's really rounding the back and reaching through the, you know, the shoulders, the deltoids, getting tons of lift through the upper back and then holding on to that lift and the contraction in the front to get the, the space for the knee to come through. That first knee coming back is the key movement. If you can get one knee back behind, what? then you'll be able to do it. But getting that one knee back is super hard. Yeah, it's always lean back, squeeze, and also make sure don't bring the hands in line with your hips, bring them a little bit in front because that almost gives you like a little bit of a scoop, like a little bit of momentum. And then from there, pull down through the belly and think about leaning with your tailbone. And then there. And so never let the upper back be flat, always here. <laughs> I got a cramp. <laughs> I'm demonstrating that and holding it. Just trying to do that, you know, pushing into the hands, just walking the knee back, walking through, you're exercising the, the same sort of work muscles that you're going to need to be able to float through. Because really, that bringing the one knee back is the same movement that yeah. will eventually, you won't need to touch the knee down, you'll keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And then for the second half, once you've wiggled your knees back to, to shoot the legs back, you really want to try and do it as fast as possible. Just kind of completely relax the legs and like, uh, let them explode. come out. Yeah. Let them explode. Um, and common too is to do a few belly flops at first mm. when you start doing that. Luckily they don't hurt. <laughs> But um, that one you want to hurry. Yeah. Like that one you want to do it fast. Shoot the legs as quick as leg, you can. Yeah. 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 And sometimes if you're wearing leggings and you're kind of not sweaty enough, then the legs get stuck because of all the friction. Okay. So be sweaty. Wear shorts. Wear shorts. Yeah. Move fast. Good luck. <laughs> Rules for life. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, good luck. Yeah. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, please be careful with your needs, though. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah, let us know. Subscribe, like, share, etc. I don't know what the etc. is. <laughs> okay, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.